Welcome back to the channel. Chelsea have just drawn two all and been robbed of a 3-2 victory at Villa Park. It should have been three goals for Chelsea again at Villa Park, but this time controversy absolutely overshadows, which was a fantastic second half performance from Chelsea. Now, before we get into it, let's address a few things. First half, not good enough. Second half, weirdly enough, under Pochettino, way better. That might be a first that our second half has actually been an improvement. We've got to talk about a few players. First off, that goal, three, four minutes into the game, Kukurea's at fault. He's too worried about what Mudrik is doing that actually it meant he ended up not concentrating enough to look at where his man went to or to pass his man off to Badashile. I'm not sure what the instructions are there from Poch in that situation, but Kukurea has to focus on doing his job. Mudrik, okay, hasn't done his and hasn't followed Bailey to the back post, but Kukurea shouldn't be worrying about that. He needs to focus on his own job, okay? However, Kukurea's second half was very instrumental to Chelsea's comeback. So, very impressed with that because how long have we been asking for our second half to be an improvement on the first or to not fall off in the second half? Well, this is something we've achieved today. So, that's a positive. The thing that's not a positive is that, realistically, Chelsea's hopes and chances of Europe now are pretty much gone. A win was a must for me today because of how our recent performances have been. The only thing I can't get my head around, though, is somehow Pochettino still hasn't lost this dressing room. You know, they're still backing him. They're still fighting for him, which we've seen so many years gone by in Chelsea's history. The manager loses the dressing room and then they're sacked. We're not. I think even Potter did. I think even Lampard did at the end of last season. We're not seeing that with Poch right now. They've got his back. Um, team lineup. Let's look at that, right? How we started off. I thought it was okay. The bench worried me. The fact that we've spent a billion pounds and that is our bench. It's worrying. It's concerning. How are 12 players injured right now? How does our bench even look like that is is very concerning. And I won't be the only person concerned because that's not my money that's been spent. Someone somewhere who spent that money is going to be concerned that that's nowhere to be seen today. Um, something off the bench could have helped us today. Maybe. Maybe. It's, it's hard to say, but you never know. But other than that, we started with a three at the back. I felt like it was okay. I felt like three at the back was okay, but we conceded so early that it basically just affected our whole game plan going forwards and I've spoken on the goal already um because I know there was a lot of controversy about that early on in the game people saying whose fault was it whatever let's address the simplicities of that do your job and then that probably doesn't happen uh then they obviously scored again a good goal we were poor the first half's a bit of a write-off for me we didn't really create too much we we looked okay Jackson looked okay probably could have scored um, had the header, didn't need it, hit the post, had a good chance. M I mean, Mudrick, how many chances have we got to give him? We obviously saw um, the three at the back with Kukurea playing high on the left, and then we saw Madawaki playing on the right, sort of as, they're not defensive enough, probably, um, to be considering a, a static five at the back. It's more of a three with attacking sort of fullbacks. We saw a double pivot again, which I think worked really well in the Everton game. We saw that return today. With Casado and Conor Gallagher. My gosh. I don't know what happens when Enzo isn't there. But Casado looks like a different player. He was fantastic today. Off the ball. On the ball. I mean the pass for Jackson's offside goal. Is amazing. Like what a pass. I've not seen him do that too much. A couple of switches that he made out to Mudrick as well. He moved the ball really well. He was fighting all around the pitch. He's not, been, he's not really been at it in recent games. That is a performance to be proud of for Casado, Conor Gallagher as well. For me, I really like him in that sort of double pivot role. Not too high up. I feel like his game's limited the higher up the pitch he gets. But when he's allowed to be in that area and bomb around the midfield, create high-pressure situations by leading the press when he can move forwards in front of other people there and Casado covers, I really like it. And it worked well. Second half, he obviously ended up moving a little bit higher because 
This is where I think, and this is a bit of a stroke of genius from Pochettino. Second half, we've gone in 2 0 down. I'm thinking 4 0. I'm not going to lie to you. I put 4 0 on the thumbnail because I thought it was awful. We, we weren't in that game. Second half, and, and we know our second halves are gone, right? It, it's never going to be an improvement. Something happened. Pochettino actually did something tactically that was a master stroke. He moved Kukurea inside. So when he was playing from left back, he kind of switched to a four. But when we were in possession, Kukurea occupied almost the double pivot role alongside Casado, sometimes making it a three if Conor Gallagher was a little bit deeper at the time. It allowed Conor to go and trigger his high press and get on the ball higher up the pitch and basically cause a bit of a problem for Aston Villa's deep midfielders and their defence because they were having a lot of time on the ball in the first half. Second half, Conor Gallagher was there, doing what he does best off the ball, pressing, working hard, causing a disruption, putting them in high-pressure situations where they ultimately fumble. And that's what happened. Conor Gallagher goes and presses really high up. So does the rest of the team. They follow because he's the leader, he's the captain. He's showing what that team needs to do. And ultimately, we win the ball back. I think Cole Palmer gets on the ball, lays it off to Conor Gallagher. Conor Gallagher scoops it into the path of Madueke, who wraps it round Olsen. It's a great finish. Madueke's putting himself in the right place. Do you know what? I've said it from the very beginning. For me, Madueke has a higher seed than Mudrick. I just think he has an ego that he needs to get rid of. He do if he doesn't get rid of the ego, I see him at Crystal Palace. If he gets rid of the ego, I see him... The sky is the limit. Because I think there's a lot of talent there. 1v1, there is not many better in the league. He is exceptional. He's very confident. He's fast. He's strong. He has the ability to work a shot. I like Madueke's ability on a football pitch. I just want to see less of the ego. And I liked his celebration. And I felt like it meant something. And we were getting back into the game. And the players could feel it. Kukurea kept occupying that position. Really, really good in there. In that, Every time we got on the ball... He would add the extra man into midfield and it allowed us to retain it and work it around the other side. And, and we looked really good and it didn't leave Casado isolated. And Kukurea did a really good job and kind of made amends for the mistake in the first half. Then obviously, Conor Gallagher gets the ball, similar sort of area as to where he got the ball for the pass to Madueke, high up on the right-hand side of the pitch, attacking Villa's goal, comes in onto his left foot. As he said himself, it's an absolute swinger, but he curls it into the goal, round Olsen. It's a fantastic finish. We're two all. All I'm thinking is, the win's on it. The win is on. Villa look like they're up against the ropes. They look shaken. You know when that momentum swings? That's what had happened. Villa really didn't look at it. And I genuinely was thinking it's only a matter of time. Then Cole Palmer gets on the ball from a mistake from Olsen in and around the 94th minute, let's say. And, well, probably the 90th. I think it might be fair to say. And, oh my gosh. Skips past one player. Skips through another. Attempts to put it through Olsen's legs. And he just saves it with the inside of his thigh. Goes out for a corner. My gosh, I'm thinking, this is it. He then whips a corner deep back post. Badashine hits some a Villa player, comes up to Badashine, who's jostling Diego Carlos, gives him a shoulder barge, puts him on the weight, moves him out the way, plays a lovely little delightful lofted pass into the path of Dezassi, who heads it, crashes it against the bar, it drops onto the back of Olsen's glove and goes in. You're thinking Chelsea have done it 3-2, there's still fight in this dog. We've done it, we've got a win, we've got another three goals at Villa Park. And then it goes to VAR. And this is what I want to talk about. It's obviously going to get overruled. As soon as you hear that, oh, it's going to be checked. They'll find something. What Badashile did is not a foul. It's a shoulder barge. It's, it's, it's not even that, if we're being perfectly honest. And Diego Carlos doesn't even flinch. Doesn't appeal for a foul. I think the only person in the whole box that appealed was the goalie because he flapped his arms in the air when it happened. No one was looking for it. The only people looking for that are the VAR officials. They're trying to find the problem. There was no clear and obvious error. It's not a foul. It's not a push. There's no hands on the back. He simply put Diego Carlos on the weights. All that gym 
for nothing, Diego Carlos. You spend half your time injured, and if not, Badashine is bodying you off the ball in that situation. I cannot understand what VAR has added to this game, to the league, to football. I genuinely think it is ruining our beautiful game. And I'm VAR out, and I have been for a while, and I've made a few videos on the channel, but this is a real problem. We are seeing week in, week out games affected because the officials decide to find something. Sometimes the players aren't calling for it, the managers aren't calling for it. There either has to be a drastic change in the way that VAR is used, and it has to be used in the way that cricket or tennis rugby use it, and they use it as like an appeal system, or limit the amount of times it can be used in a game because it is causing serious issues and do not let the officials be in control of when it is used if it's going to stay in the game if not you take the approach that sweden have just taken in their top flight and say do you know what we've seen it used everywhere else we don't want it it messes up the game it ruins it it kills beautiful moments look whether you are a neutral you're a chelsea fan all of us have been affected by VAR at some point, and it is seriously, seriously, seriously decreasing the quality of the entertainment, the integrity of the sport. It's a mess. Look, the other day at Nottingham Forest, you know, that they've had to go and complain that there's an official working in VAR who's a fan of the opposing team. It's a mess. It's a shambles. It's ruining football. And the only way it's going to be removed is if the fans speak up, like we did for the Super League, like we did for loads of other things, like Chelsea fans have done for the owner of our club. We said no to Ricketts. It didn't happen. We've got to make our voices heard because there can't be that many people who are in favour of VAR right now because everyone's being affected by it in a negative way. And do you know what? I'm open to interpretation. And you know the one thing I will say is actually referees. Their quality's dropping. And I think you have to give them the benefit of the doubt that before VAR, they may have been better. They may have been better. They really don't want to do much anymore. And for me, that's a massive problem as well because the quality of our officials does not match the standard of the league. And we're seeing that in Europe as well. There are definitely officials that do not match the standard that football is at across the board around Europe. It's a mess. Get VAR out of the game. Chelsea have been robbed. It's a robbery. I'm fed up. I don't want to see it affecting games anymore. Chelsea season, look, it's not good. A draw's not... Look, a draw against Villa's okay if you look at where we are in the season. But for what we needed to achieve, we moved up to eighth today if we got a win. You know, and, and then all of a sudden we're three points off and then we're level at seventh if we can beat Tottenham. No. We've got a hard game coming up against Spurs. I think I'm going to give credit to Pochettino today for a good second half. And I actually felt he couldn't do much against uh, with, with his team. But one thing I've got to say is, Mudrik, the time's up for me. He, he is not good enough for Chelsea. He's not good enough for the Premier League. There are players out there that are 16, 17, four or five years difference to Mudrik in age, doing so much more. Let's forget about the young talk. Let's forget about the age. He's just not good enough. In fact, I think he's uh, very far off it, you know? And I, I genuinely would be interested to see how well we do in the championship. Because go and look at Amari Hutchinson, a Chelsea player. Look at what he's doing at Ipswich. He looks phenomenal. I don't think Mudrick would be on that level in the championship. We saw that shot today. Almost go out for a throw. It's not acceptable. I'm not happy with that. Thiago Silva, I'm hoping he's not injured. And... um. I'm really, really not sure on the future of Raheem Sterling because every game that he doesn't play, his value is dropping. And, and to move him on is going to be a difficult job. So, look, that's my thoughts. I'm not happy. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. We are on the road to 2,500 subscribers. I would love you to join the community. Check, out, check me out on all the socials as well. And I'll catch you in the next one.